morning, Promise Church, and welcome to our service today. We are so glad that you've been able to join us here and, uh, and be part of our worship experience together. And uh, we just want to welcome you and let you know that you are loved. If this is your first time joining with us as a church, then I want to encourage you to go to promisechurch.community. And on promisechurch.community, you'll see the yellow tab. And we'd love to hear from you. Just get connected with us, um, your name and, and some simple contact information, so that we can connect with you and invite you into this journey, uh, into this community and journey. So... Promise Church is a community that exists to foreshadow the fulfillment of God's promises, and we are a group of people that are located mostly in Bradford, Ontario, and surrounding area, but we have this online presence where we can connect with people and, and engage and build a Christian community where you can be encouraged to know Christ and to grow in your relationship with Him. And so that's what we do. That's why we'd love to hear from you. You can also, uh, if you, if you want to keep on joining us on Sundays, you can also join our Slack conversation. So Slack is a place where we are actually live, real time, engaging with each other and even asking questions about the message and stuff like that. So please join on Slack. And if you're a regular attender, then, you know, be on Slack and post your pictures of where you are and what you're doing so that you can engage with everybody else. During this COVID time, it's been strange having a remote church, but just posting a picture and saying, hey everybody is so helpful to knowing that we are together and uh, and so that is great today is also baptism Sunday and so while online in this service we won't be able to show baptisms we're going to be talking about baptisms but know that there are a handful of people actually there are five people and maybe even more getting baptized today and we're really, really excited about that. It's a very serious time in a Christian's journey where they outwardly say, I have put aside my old life and I am going to follow Jesus intently for the rest of my life. And so that's what's happening in service today. But we are so glad that you've been able to join us and we invite you into the very presence of God in your space, wherever it is right now. We know that God is joining with you and has been with you. And so I'm going to pray as you start to acknowledge God's presence with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that you are right here in this room, in this space, you are meeting with us. And today, We've set aside other distractions. We've set aside all the things that pull at us and, and tear us down and, and make us feel different things and make us feel too busy to acknowledge what you're doing. We set that aside and consciously we acknowledge that you, almighty and eternal God, are here present in the room with us and you are asking for an even more intimate relationship with us. And so, Jesus, I pray that you would open up our hearts, that we would open up our hearts, that we would work in tandem together to be in your presence. And God, because you have given us this opportunity through Jesus Christ, we give you praise. And so we thank you for everything you are going to do in this service, everything you have done up to this service, and everything you will do after this service. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rob. Promise, before we get into worship today, I just want to take a moment and first of all, I want to appreciate all the work of our tech team. Um, over COVID, we have had to make huge adjustments to be able to bring the service to you online each week, um, and they've done a fantastic job of making that happen. Um, but right now, we find ourselves in a very urgent need of volunteers. If we want to be able to keep giving you a service on Sunday that you can access online or at home, we actually urgently need people. It's only been possible up to this point because of the work and dedication of a very few group, of a very small group of people, some of which who are actually here every week to make it work. Um, and it's going to start taking its toll if we can't begin to build the team out and, and strengthen what we have and build what we have. So I, I put this call out to anyone who has any interest or any willingness to help serve in the tech team in some capacity, whether it's computers or cameras or sound or whatever. Um, I would urge you, please get in contact with me so that we can keep doing this at a great and high level. Um, I will note it is a Wednesday evening and Sunday commitment, but it's not every week if we have enough people. And so the more people we get on board, the less of a burden it is on the people that are willing to help. So please get in touch with me if you can, and um, I would love to have you join us. Um, no experience is required. If you want to join us, we will help you train. We will help you learn everything. Um, all it takes is a heart to, to serve and to worship with us, and we'll help you get, 
get the technical side all taken care of. So thank you again to all the people that do make it possible. We really do thank you. Um, and they will continue to help. And yeah, so this morning we're going to enter into worship, just as Rob said. And I want to encourage you now to just begin to allow the Holy Spirit to start moving in your home. Father, we worship you. God, we worship you this morning, and we give you our hearts, we give you our minds, and God, we focus on you, and we give you all that we have, and we worship you this morning, Lord. Thomas, let's sing this morning. Let's sing, who breaks the power? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty? And so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings.
So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship his holy name, and sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship His holy name, and sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship His holy name, and sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship his soul. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship His holy name, and sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name, I worship Your holy name. worship you this morning. Thank you for joining us, Promise. Good morning. Uh, for those of you who follow our regular schedule, uh, today is usually a forum Sunday, but as Rob mentioned earlier, we're having a baptism 
uh, service today as well. Some of our people are getting baptized. Uh, but we didn't want to miss out on the spiritual discipline for today because spiritual disciplines are important to us here as a community. Uh, so what I want to do is I just want to share testimony about what has been happening recently and about what's going on. Um, on June the 23rd, uh, my grandfather, who was 95 and four months old, passed away. And uh, I had the privilege of being there with him. Um, and I, it was, of, of course, it was a sad moment. But I just want to read you the scripture that was on the, um, the program that we had at his funeral. And it says, it's found in 1 Corinthians 15. It says, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? When I was there with him, there was a peace. And that peace wasn't because he lived a long, good life and wasn't because he uh, had done many good things and wasn't because uh, he was such a great man. He was all of those things. But the peace came because he had put his faith in the faithfulness of Jesus. And I knew that he was going on to a better thing. The two promises that we believe in here are that God will be with us, which he absolutely was in that moment, and that God would make all things right. And for him now, all things are right. It says, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is, is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And today, there are five people who are saying to those around them, those that love them, I have put my faith in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. And for them, they are given peace. They are, are given the um, promise of amazing things to come and promise of great things to do here on earth. And so I just encourage any of you, if you struggle with what's the point or what's happening or why is God doing any of these things, put your faith in the faithfulness of Christ. Experience what it means to be have God with us and to know that he has a plan and a purpose and that he is choosing to make all things right. And hopefully one day we'll be able to celebrate with you as you publicly declare that you have put your faith in the faithfulness of Jesus. We're going to take up our offering now. Uh, if you go to promisechurch.community and grow, go to the green giving tab, uh, follow that. Make sure that you designate um, your ties to Promise Church so that it comes to us, and uh, then we can use that for uh, the work that we're doing here. I'm just going to pray now. God, we just thank you. We thank you for your provisions. We thank you for the things that you give to us. Lord, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for baptism. We thank you for all the many ways uh, that you are with us and that you provide for us, Lord. And as we worship you, as we declare before others that you are our God, as we bring in these tithes and offerings, I pray that you would just use them to bless this community. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our first announcement is that we have another Promise Grant starting up. There's one going right now, but we are starting a new one in a couple weeks. Uh, Rob and Tiffany are going to be leading that Promise Grant. And so if you would like to be involved in it, it's a really fun and simple process. Uh, I think they actually even already have an idea. But if you want to be involved in that, it's about four weeks and then you actually do the grant, you can connect with Rob or with Tiffany on Slack, and they will give you the information on when that's going to happen. Um, we had our first youth meeting last week, and so uh, we are excited to be meeting again. Uh, so we are looking forward to it. It will not be no, it will be this coming Sunday. I'm getting my dates mixed up. Uh, we're meeting at the Brickles house. And so we're just getting together to have fun and to connect. And so we hope to see you there. Uh, probably the most exciting announcement is we are coming back in person. As we have moved into stage three, we can have as many people in the building as we can socially distance. And at Bradford United Church, we are able to fit our entire congregation. So we look forward to seeing you Saturday, Sunday, July 25th at 11 o'clock here at Bradford United in person. And we're so excited about gathering together again. Hope to see you there. Good morning, Promise Kids. I'm outside enjoying the wonderful outdoors today. From where I sit, I can see 
the spider over there. Ugh. Couple caterpillars on a tree behind me. I can hear the birds singing this morning. It's so awesome. Peaceful and quiet. There's so much nature all around me. Bet you're wondering what bug are we going to learn about today? Good question. We're going to learn about grasshoppers. Grasshoppers are so cool. I remember when I was a kid and my brother and I would catch grasshoppers and we'd study them and look at them and then we'd let them go because they deserve to be free, don't they? You know, there's some cool facts I learned about grasshoppers while I was learning this week. They have three stages to a life cycle. They start off as an egg and then when they're hatched, they're called a nymph teeny tiny and then from a nymph they take many 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 stages to get to an adult that's it they have lots of predators you hear those birds those birds are looking for their breakfast and grasshoppers are one of their favorite breakfasts you know who else likes to eat grasshoppers spiders big spiders rodents those little mice that mom and dad try to trap underneath the sink those like grasshoppers too, and even snakes. I've seen a snake or two in my backyard. How about you? You know what grasshoppers like to eat? They like to eat what people call cereal crops, like clover and wheat, barley and rye. They also eat grass and lots and lots of leaves. If you ever catch a grasshopper and you put it in a container and watch it, you always put lots of leaves and grass in there, don't you? As they grow, they molt. They shed all their skin to make room for their new skin because they're growing and they burst right out of there. So they keep molting over and over again until they get to the size that they are. Did you know that grasshoppers can leap 20 times their body length? That is huge. You know, if you and I were to do that, we could leap one single bound from one end of a football field to the other end of a football field. That is huge. Can you imagine doing that? What a ride. And did you know that grasshoppers have wings too? Have you ever seen a grasshopper fly? They don't just take off and start flying. What they do is they use their legs and they jump and once they're in the air then they expand their wings to give them a boost give them a lift up and help them go even farther that's pretty cool i wish i could do that i'd get to work faster wouldn't i you know grasshoppers remind me of us you know when when we start out we're little teeny tiny babies Little Olivia has a brand new baby, Lucy, and she's teeny tiny, but not for long. Sorry, moms and dads. Babies don't stay teeny tiny, cute and cuddly for very long. They just keep growing. And as they grow, they don't molt, but they have to get new clothes because they're growing. And you need to make room for all that growth. You know, as Christians, when we accept Jesus into our heart and we want to live with him, we start off, off as babies too. We're baby Christians. We're brand new. We don't know a lot. We don't know about the world. We don't know a whole lot about Jesus yet. We start off brand new. And as we grow, we learn more and more about Jesus. And all that stuff that we learn helps us to become who we are. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. You know, when we're babies, we drink milk, don't we? We don't eat steak and potatoes when we're brand new and babies. That's later on. We start off as, with milk. And then you go into some pablum and cereal. And then you go into soft foods and then hard foods. And as you get older, you eat better food, right? More solid food. Well, it's kind of like us as Christians too. 
when we're brand new. It says crave spiritual milk. When we're brand new Christians, we want that milk. We want to learn about Jesus. And as we get older, as a Christian, we eat bigger food. And you know how we do that? We don't actually eat the food. And what we do is we involve ourselves in things like um, small groups, Sunday school, going to church, praying every day, reading our Bible every day. Those are all food, things that we can do and we can eat, things that we can do for ourselves that help us grow up as a Christian. You know, just like those grasshoppers when they take a jump and they open their wings so that they can go even further. That's what you and I need to do as Christians. We need to take that step, take that leap and open our wings and get that boost, that boost of Jesus. Talk, talk to Christians around you, read the Bible, pray with other friends, all those things that are spiritual food. Those are the things that give us that extra boost as Christians. So, what's the word for today? We are growing grasshoppers. We're growing up, aren't we? We're not babies anymore. So I encourage you this week, read your Bible, pray, see what else you can find that you can eat as Christians. Reading your Bible is a big one. There's a lot of truth in there. So this week, be a growing grasshopper and learn as much as you can about Jesus. And it will help you grow, grow, grow. Enjoy the outdoors this week. Hopefully it doesn't rain. See you later, guys. Bye. So this sermon series has been about mission and about rest. We've been holding the two in tension where we've been saying, you know, God is calling us to a purpose, a direction where the Christian community needs to work together. Promised church needs to work together. And we fore foreshadow the fulfillment of God's promises. That's a mission that we have. But there's so much work involved in that mission that we also need to understand that we need to also rest. And we rest in the knowledge that God is more interested in his mission than we are. God with us is where we rest. Where we come on a Sunday and we say, God, thank you so much for being more interested in this mission than we are. Thank you for investing your energy into it and we allow God to fill us up. That's a summation of what the Christian life is, where, we, where we're partnering with God and where we're relying on God. We're joining with God and using our own energy and our strength in the finite, little, small, time-bound piece that it is, but we use it and we say, God, to God be the glory. For everything that we're able to contribute, it's because God is doing something much greater. God is making all things right. And so we're joining in that mission. It's not hard to see that there's lots of evils around us and lots of things that have gone wrong. And, and we go, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. And in that, we take times, like on Sunday, like right now, and we say, I'm going to rest. I'm going to let go of my work like God did on the seventh day of creation in Genesis. I'm going to let go of my work, and I'm going to rest, knowing that tomorrow I'm going to pick it up again. Tomorrow, I'm going to continue on in the mission of making things right with the world and allowing people to know that God wants to be with them. That's the gospel. God with us. And, uh, and that's such a great understanding that we've been working through over the past few weeks. If you want to listen to those messages, you can go back on YouTube. You can see them, and they're, they're great. So what are we doing today? Well, as Pastor Danielle noted, we normally would have a discussion about all of that today. 
Normally we would be bantering back and forth and, and discussing, you know, the tension between mission and rest, and it's such a great topic, and I really wish we were able to do that today, but we have something more important that we're doing. Instead of just bantering about it, we're actually baptizing people, and we're seeing that people are saying, yes, this is what I want to do. I want to follow Jesus, join with him in his mission, and see that God is with us, making all things right now and fully consummated when Jesus returns, fully brought to fulfillment when Jesus returns. And there could be nothing more exciting than that. The looking towards Jesus' return when he completes everything that he set out to do. And we are truly raptured. We're truly caught up in the joy of his presence. We're truly uh, overwhelmed with it. And so that is wonderful. Today, today, we're going to look at baptism as it happened. Because one of the things that happens is, is as we've looked at mission and rest, and as we've looked at what it means to be part of this, we have tons of religious ideas about what it takes to be qualified for baptism. In the Protestant tradition, which Promised Church is a part of, we actually do adult baptism. It's baptism by immersion, and you're down, and, and you're up. And it's different than what mainline traditions do, where they do sprinkling baptism and infant baptism. And so, what qualifies a person to be baptized? What is, is the marker that says, oh, oh, that's it? Do they need to be, you know, at a point where they're saying, I, I have come to a decision? Do they need to be at a point where they've said, I have hit this notch of performance? Do they need to be at a point where they say, I have been involved in this church for X number of days? What are the qualifiers for baptism? So today I'm going to read an extended text because it's one story. And I'm going to read it as the story it is. And then we're going to look at three points about what happened in the story. And it's just going to be very, very Simple, because God makes access to his promises simple. So let's read it today, and, uh, and right before, uh, yeah, let's read it today. It's Acts 8, 26 to 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise, and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join the chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And then he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. Like a lamb before its shears is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him, and who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, and Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And when they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus. And as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. What a great story. Very simple, very straightforward, just a lovely story, but there's a lot going on here. I'm going to pray. God, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you that you communicate so much about yourself and your action. 
and that we read these narratives and it's not like a, an, a formal essay. It's a simple story in which you show yourself. And so God, I thank you that you use narratives through scripture to show us yourself. I thank you that all scripture points to you. And Jesus, I pray that you would open up our eyes today so that we can see you more clearly and understand where we fit in the story. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do just need to make a note about one of the announcements about youth, just for clarity. Um, there was a little bit of a slip in the announcement. The youth meeting is this Thursday. So you can go to promisechurch.community um, and go to what's happening and check the, the address um, for youth. But it is this Thursday, not this Sunday. So three things about this, this story. The first one is the Ethiopian needed somebody to guide him to the good news of Jesus. We, we see it when uh, Philip says, you know, uh, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch says, how can I unless somebody guides me? Well, this is so interesting because he's reading the inspired word of God. And the Holy Spirit is doing his work. But he still needs somebody to guide him. There's something that every Christian needs here. Every Christian needs guidance from the Christian community. We all need it. We all need that, that teaching, that steering. Because the Holy Spirit works, yes, in our hearts. But he affirms the work through the community of believers as well. And these two come into agreement and when there's this agreement, then we grow. And so what's happened is the person who's clearly on his way from worshiping in Jerusalem, he's clearly a God-fearer. He wants to worship God. Holy Spirit's doing work, drawing him to his word, but also drawing Philip alongside and, and saying, okay, I want you to communicate to him directly, having this conversation so that he can grow. We grow when we, when we explore and when we are part of the Christian community. That's why we go to church. We go to church because it's in that time that, we, that our understanding of God is challenged and refined, not just by the sermon like this is, but by the Christian community where God, by the, His Holy Spirit, is talking to all of us and we're all being formed into His image. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, He is forming us in His image. And so every Christian needs guidance from the Christian community, and that's what's going on here. You know, the, the Christian community continues to be the voice of the good news. We are the voice of the good news when, when we're doing it right. Now, the Christian community can go off the rails. We can start to miss our point and start to be, we've talked lots about starting to measure people by the wrong metrics, by, by getting, you know, distracted. But when the Christian community is doing it right, the Christian community is the voice of the good news of God. That's what we bring. We proclaim we say to people that this is the good news of God. And, and what is it? God has come to live with us. So many times, we've taken that very lightly. God's everywhere. God's in the air. God's with me in the mall. You know, and, and when was the last time you went to the mall? Sorry, distracted. God is everywhere. And, and because we get comfortable with that idea, we're just like, God is everywhere, which kind of means God is nowhere. Like, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But what God is with us means is that there is something very powerful about the presence of God, that manifest, that, that observable, that feelable, that tangible presence of God, the creator of the world has promised to be with us, and that's overwhelming. When we really get into that headspace, when we really get into that even imaginative space, there's something that goes inside of us like, whoa, that's too much. That's intimidating. That is crazy. That is so over my capacity to understand. 
That's something that is way too much. And so what God has done is God has said, I understand that difference. So I'm going to allow you to see me as a person. I'm going to incarnate. Emmanuel is an old word. You'll see it at Christmas time. You see it in uh, Handel's Messiah if you've ever been, you know, had that. But you get this Emmanuel, which is translated directly, God with us. We proclaim the good news. God is with us in the person of Jesus. So we have the historic records, the four gospels of the person of Jesus walking with us. This is what God with us does. And isn't that a beautiful thing? When you think about what would God do in the world today? What would God do in the world? We look at the gospels and we say, what did God do in the world when he walked among us? God did a lot of amazing things. And he has has said, I am going to live with you. And when I live with you, I'm going to make all things right. And that's what God did as he walked among us. He just, things happened around him. One day he was walking to heal somebody. And on his walk towards healing someone else, a a woman comes and touches the hem of his garment and and says, because she's convinced that if she just touches his hem, then she'll be healed of her long-term sickness. And, and Jesus notices it right away and says, whoa, 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 somebody just touched me. I felt power go out of me. It wasn't, even like, it wasn't even like he intended to do something. It was that as the woman touched him, it, the power of God, because he is God, just flows through and heals her. And he was like, I, I noticed that. And, and so you, what does God do? He just makes things right just by walking by. This is the presence of God, that God has come to be with us and promises to be with us. Today as the church, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and and that Holy Spirit speaks through us as a community, refining us like I was talking about earlier. We experience that. We experience God's voice. We experience it in our hearts. We experience it in our community, but we will experience it even further when Jesus returns. We will have God in us, by the Holy Spirit speaking to us and guiding us at every step, the same way that Jesus was being guided by the Holy Spirit in his ministry. We will have God with us in the person of Jesus, and we will have God all around us in the glory of God, in, reflected in all of creation. And you see that even in, in Revelation 21, that the, that the light will be all around us because it is God. God has come to live with us, and he will defeat evil. Every single one of us has participated with evil, even the eunuch. Even the eunuch. He will defeat evil. And we've participated with evil. It might be pride. It might be you taking things into your own hands to make justice happen. And so you, you impose retribution on and you make it your role. It might be, it might be um, that you are just not able to participate in things because of because of fear or anxiety of death or sickness and it's inhibited your life this might not be an evil that you choose that you do but it's one that you're in it's around you and sometimes we we are participating in ones that that we actually want to participate in hedonistic ideas of i just feel like it i want to do this i want i want that even though it's bad for me I, I, I use it as a crutch. I use it as a reliance. I have this vice. I do this. And, and we participate with evil, and God's come to defeat the evil in the world, but also in us. He's come to, to set us free from it, to redeem us from it, to, to make it so it doesn't affect us any longer. And what he does with it is, is he forgives our participation. He forgives our participation with evil. And that was exemplified in Jesus on the cross. And so that is what we put our faith in, that God is with us, making all things right, and forgiving us for our participation. See, we want to have a reason for baptism. And what happened in this story, the second point I'm going to bring out is, what happened in this story is the Ethiopian needed somebody to guide him, and in hearing the good news of Jesus, it was enough reason for him to be baptized. It is in the hearing 
the good news of Jesus and saying, there, that's it. That's what I want. It isn't in the getting rid of all of my sins that we find ourselves in a place that we're baptized. It's in hearing the good news. The, the, the eunuch hears the gospel story from Philip in the chariot and then, and then looks outside and says, oh, look, there's, there's water here. What's stopping me from being baptized into this? What's stopping me? There is nothing stopping him. There is no obstacle. He heard the news and he's like, that's it. I'm in. I'm in. That's it. God has forgiven him of the evil that he's participated in. He has promised to be with him. And now the man in response goes, well, then I'm in. I'm going to get baptized right here, right now. And Philip is going, I don't see a reason. What reason is there? What prevents me from being baptized? And clearly the answer is no, because the next verse says, they stopped the chariot. It's spontaneous. It's something that's like, I'm in, I know it, I'm, let's go. Maybe you haven't been baptized yet. And it might be a little bit too late for you to get baptized today right now, but there's something that's like, I'm in. I didn't know that I didn't need to measure up or I didn't need to be a member of a church or I didn't need to, whatever. I'm in, I heard the gospel. I heard that God wants to be with me and God is going to make all things right and God forgives me. I heard this good news. I'm in. And there's nothing that prevents anybody from being baptized. And, and this is important. You can be baptized right now by hearing the gospel and saying, yep, I want to get baptized. See, the eunuch did not need to go back and consider all of the ways in which he had served Queen Candace and, and did he do everything right and ethically and morally and, and, and did he, was he the righteous person that he wanted to be and did he do enough and was his pilgrimage to Jerusalem enough to get... No, he didn't need to do that. He needed to hear the gospel. Respond to it. The gospel was like a, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, like a lamb before its shears, he was silent and he did not open his mouth. And that's a picture of Jesus being led innocently towards the cross when he had the power to do everything to stop it, when he could have taken justice into his own hands, he submitted himself to the will of God and said, God, I know you can carry me through this. It's going to suck, I know but I know and I trust you that you're going to carry me through this. And even in the face of death, Jesus submits his physical life, even though he is God, he submits his physical life. And he goes, not my will, but your will be done. And he, like, a, like a lamb before it shears is silent and he does not open his mouth. That's what Jesus did. Where he did not take it into his own hands to fight for justice for himself, but he allowed God to vindicate him and raise him from the dead. And this is good news. This is what the Lamb of God did. And the eunuch sees it and goes, yeah, that's amazing. That God has overcome death. Oh, death, where is your victory? Like Pastor Danielle read earlier today. God has overcome death. And so in this, the eunuch goes away rejoicing. Every single person who's getting baptized today has a reason to rejoice. Because we are included. See, it's inclusion into the family of God that brings confidence and hope for the rest of our life. We have that inclusion in the family of God. We now, are, we now have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We are speaking the words of God to each other and hearing the words of God from each other and from the Holy Spirit. And we look forward to the day that Jesus comes back and lives among us in physical, tangible form. And we, we foreshadow the, the fulfillment of God's promise that he's going to live with us. When we gather on Sunday on our mission, or, or as we rest, we gather and we say, yes, God, we know that you're going to be with us. And we join in the mission of God making all things right. And we see in the world around us that there's a ton of things that are wrong. There's tons of ways that evil iterates in the world around us. And instead of pushing against the people, we actually start to say, okay, well, how can we mitigate against the evil and show what the world looks like when evil is being removed? How can we do that? And these people who are baptized, they've now been included into that family that does that of great 
purpose, a great mission that's sustainable with rest. You're included in, and you say, I am a part of this great movement that has lasted for centuries. And that is why we're getting baptized. That's why it's important. And so today, I know that you are at home or in your car or in a field somewhere watching this. But let that simmer in your heart for a moment. Do you want to join this mission that's sustainable in rest? Do you want to join it? Do you want to say, yeah, that's my identity marker? What prevents you? Nothing. Contact me. Through, through Slack or Rob at promisechurch.ca say, I want to get baptized. This is something that I need to do. I want in. And that's the only requirement. You heard the good news. What prevents you from getting baptized? There's nothing. And so I'm going to pray for you. And if you've already been baptized, then pray with me for those who, who have not yet been baptized. God, for those who have not yet been baptized, God, I pray that you would work inside of their hearts, that they would recognize that there's nothing inside of them that disqualifies them from following you and taking you up on your offer. God, that that we would be able to take this, this forgiveness that you have offered us because we participated in the evil that's around us, and we know that you set your entire mission to to eradicate and remove the evil, and we are on board with that. We want you to remove the evil. We don't want to carry on in the evil that we participate in, and we also don't want to see the evil continue to destroy the world around us. And so we're, we're giving that to you, and we also place our firm hope in the rest that, that you are so interested in this mission, and you come to live with us. Emmanuel, Jesus walking among us. Holy Spirit within us. You came to live with us, and we accept that. We accept your presence. We accept your input. We accept Not our will, but your will be done. I pray that every single one of us would be identified by that. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you for being a part of our service today. And next Sunday, July 25th, we invite you to be here, 66 Berry Street North, Bradford, Ontario. It's, um, it is the building of Bradford United Church. Promise Church is meeting there. Come join us. We have space for you. We will be socially distanced, and it's going to be an awesome service. So we look forward to seeing you in person next week. And we'll also still be online if it's too far of a drive for you um, or whatever that that restriction is for you, we will still be online here on YouTube. So thank you. God bless you.